Hello there, I'm Black Bright, um, broadcasting out the UK into your homes, into your space. And yes, um, yeah, as you will have noticed, I've changed the format a little bit. Basically, um, I'm kind of amalgamating all the different topics I want to talk about in one. It just, you know, to make it a bit easier, to make it less videos for you to try and catch up on. At least you can see from the date, um, what date I'm covering and when. And I think it's a bit more organised. So I hope you bear with me and I hope you um, like this journey I am trying out, really. It's just a kind of a trial thing to see how it goes, to see how you like it. OK, so it's going to take me a little while to get into it because, you know me, I get a bit passionate, but then I sometimes don't get passionate until in the middle. And then, you know, sometimes at the beginning, depending on the topic, and I get more passionate with some topics than I do with others. So anyway, the first one is not so um, exciting. It's about money. And a lot of people are wondering whether or not they should take their money out of the bank, because as you can imagine, a lot of people are absolutely worried if they're going to lose the money that they've got in the bank. So some of them are thinking about taking it out. So a lot of people have already taken it out and are keeping it at home, which I know it sounds a bit back to front because if the whole country goes bankrupt, what's going to happen to your money and you feel safe having it at home? But the fact of the matter is, is that it is secured up to 85000 per institution. So technically, providing you don't get killed off by the virus or something other major catastrophe happens, when all of this dies down, you, sh you can get your money back, even if there's a financial crash. You do get your money back up to 85000 And if you've got home insurance, you can get a thousand pounds from them. Um, so that's one thing worth thinking about. So in answer to that, it's much safer to be in the bank, although it won't feel safer to be in the bank, if you get my meaning. Um, conspiracy theories, um, are they more dangerous? Because, you know, a lot of conspiracy theories are going around. We end up worrying about them. We don't know if they're true and if they're not true. And um, it, it can get quite nerve wracking. You know, if you think that everything that you hear is true and there's nothing you can do about it and you're stressing about it and then you go on defense mode and then you can't think rationally and then you become reactive and you have to ask yourself, what can I do? Even if this is true, what can I do? If you've got a plan, then that's fine. But um, psychologists say that people get more stressed um, about so-called conspiracy theories than the truth. Well, not the truth. The Well, we don't know what is life and what is truth. That's why we have these things called conspiracy theories. So um, usually it's triggered off by anxiety, it's digitally dispensed advice um, from various sources um, that, may, that might not be credible. Um, imaginative minds think, uh, think the worst and they can think of the worst. Think about that book, The Man Who Cried, I Am. Look how far his imagination went. Look how that became... Um, well, we don't know if it'll actually come into fruition, but at the time that he wrote it, it was his imagination that made him think the worst. And when you think, when you think like that, and the fear it put into people who just found the excerpt from his book is unimaginable. So we have to kind of keep our heads screwed on and not take things out of context. Whether we know, we all have our form of truth. We all know what we know. And those who don't know is because they're not interested. So it's very important that you don't let it stress you out. 
whatever it is you believe, you don't let it stress you out. Um, social media influences have become unofficial sources of information, me included. I just give my opinion. I like to think I always say it's my opinion. I never, I don't, well, I don't know if I've ever said it's fact. Unless it's, um, unless I get it from a newspaper. And it, when I do, I always put the links underneath so you can see where I get it from. Or if at any time you wanted to know where the link is, I can provide it for you. Because I always, I always get my information from some source. Um, except for those little video things that you see I show and then I don't have the source because uh, it's not like they've been done on YouTube or anything like that. Um, Facebook, Google and Twitter are now using algorithms to reduce conspiracy driven material and are working with WHO officials to ensure accurate information is being widely circulated. So, if anybody is putting anything out there that they deem to be fake news or they deem to be conspiracy theory or they deem to be not kosher or they de deem to be fear-mongering, it carries a penalty. All forms of character, all forms of penalties, from jail time to fines to whatever. So um, it's important, according to Harper's Bazaar, it's important to plug gaps of knowledge with reliable information. So always, always check the information and research it for yourself to make sure that what you're hearing from whatever source is credible and it's coming from a credible source. Or don't forget to put your clocks forward. Um, in Britain, it's Greenwich Mean Time will be going to British Summer Time, called Daylight Saving Time. So, yeah, all clocks go forward at one o'clock this morning. I thought I'd throw that one in before I forgot. Um, so when you're dealing with any kind of theory that sounds plausible, um, just be vigilant and analytical. Always research the information yourself. Never rely on unofficials who are dispensing information based on their limited knowledge and like I say me included I just I just like to put it out there um, and scrutinize it before sharing analyze the possible effect that information may have on the recipient we don't want anyone making risky decisions based on what they've told them yeah I get I get sent a lot of disturbing um, information and I either don't share it or I share it with, I kind of discern who I share that information with because you have to bear in mind not everybody has the same resilience or the mental disposition. And you need to know that whatever you share, the person is, is in the right frame of mind um, to accept that information. And if you're unsure, don't share it because some people... They, they can think the worst and they can imagine all sorts of things and they can go out doing some silly things. So be careful about what you're sharing at this time, please. I know it's easy. You get, I mean, most of the ones I, I share now is um, the ones with a little bit of humour because it, it gets to the point where it gets scarier and scarier and scarier by the minute and you don't want to uh, perpetuate the fear. For, you know, especially in people who may not be able to cope. We all, like I said, we all have different levels of where we are. Some people can cope, some people can't. So just be careful. Um, what else is there? It's impact on music. Well, the coronavirus has really impacted music DJs, promoters, festivals. Venues have lost thousands. Festivals and venues are probably insured if they're large enough. And I was just thinking, you know, um, when you think about some of the smaller promoters, I'm wondering if when they have these events, they actually insured it against cancellation. They probably didn't even think about insuring it, which is a shame. But hopefully the majority of them did because they invest a lot of money in these events. Um... 
And I was also wondering if um, the coronavirus would be um, construed as an unnatural disaster as opposed to a natural disaster. With natural disasters, insurance companies don't pay out. So do they pay out on unnatural disasters like this situation that we have now? Any DJs from Europe's 26-member Schengen Zone planning to tour the US in the next month cannot. There's a 30-day travel ban. This does not apply to US citizens. Permanent residents and their families. Yeah, it doesn't apply to US citizens, permanent residents and their families. So any American and US-based DJ currently on tour in Europe facing cancelled gigs should be, should, doesn't say will, should be able to return home while the ban is in place. But like I said, anything is possible. They might decide, so well, you've been to Italy or whatever, you ain't coming back, mate. Steer where you're there. Okay, when will it be over? Um, yeah, that's what people are saying. When will it be over? Well, it's very, very difficult to say when it will be over because we're not psychic. We cannot know. Um, we have to deduce that they, there's a target. Well, what they're estimating, the people who died, how many people they're planning to um, vaccinate, how, and the results of those vaccinations. Um, I mean, they're talking about 12 weeks in line with China. Um, I think Portugal um, are going, are closing their lockdown or lifting their lockdown. No, they're not. China is lifting their lockdown on the 8th of April. Portugal, well, I forget what I wrote about Portugal, but anyway, China's lifting. It, what a turn of events with China. China is now not allowing any foreign nationals into China even if they're permanent residents, even if they've got a visa. Foreign nationals are not being, well, temporarily not being allowed back in China. And what they're saying is in, in January, the US did the same thing because the US banned any foreign national who came from China from coming into back into the United States. So is this... You know, the tables have turned. So um, we know that there's this other kind of virus to do with the birds or something. Again in China, I don't know what's going on there, but they are literally banning any foreign person from coming in. And you can understand why. Um, 60 to 80 percent estimated to be resistant to COVID-19. And that will be the end goal. Um, those who survive the vaccine will be okay for now. There's a second strain predicted in a year's time. It is meant to be seasonal like the flu. So will the vaccines up their ante each time to see the tolerance level of each individual? That's my concern. I mean, if they're talking about it's seasonal and okay, they've got this vaccine for this round. It doesn't kill off everybody. Not not everybody dies from it. And and then it comes around next year, you know, and they try another vaccine. I mean, how long is this going to go on for? But apparently they want to make sure that, you know, the whole entire population, from what I gather, has developed a herd immunity before they can say that the trials are over and things can go back to normal. That is going to take some time. That is not going to take 12 weeks. That is not going to take six months. It's more likely to take about a year, I would imagine. So, um, yeah, the time it takes, it depends on the vaccines, um, how long the disease takes to work through the population. Some will die, others will recover. Apparently, I noticed today that a thousand, a thousand people are dead in the UK now. Process, um, things will never be the same um, because, you know, this remote working, can you imagine? 
living like this, where you're work, living from your home and you don't go out and you don't interact with anybody and you kind of do this for six months, will that become the new normal? Will isolation become the new normal? Will families just start staying together and growing stronger together in this new normal way? Will we ever go back out and socialise in the way that we have in the past? Will, we, will the malls ever be full? Will trains ever be packed again? We don't know. We don't know what will happen after this dies down. Because they say it only takes 30 days to build a habit, to change a habit. 30 days. And if we are being, even if we're going into, say, 90 days, we're going to, I mean, we are going to be psyched up for this new type of lifestyle. So people will just get used to it. It will just become a new habit, a new way of living. People will forget about what they did before. Maybe. Just thinking out loud, as I normally do, giving my little bits of opinion here and there. Um, yeah, I've already said that about China. Denying foreign nationals with valid visas or resident permits. Um, they are temporarily suspended, effective yesterday. Exceptions are diplomatic workers and foreign nationals coming for necessary economic trade, scientific or technological activities, or emergency humanitarian need. What else? Um, Canadian, yeah, guess what? I don't believe this. Well, I do believe it. The selfishness of some people. 26-year-old Canadian gets on a plane going to Jamaica. You have money for weeks. In the middle of the flight, he stands up and makes the insinuation that he's got the coronavirus and he's not feeling well and he's just come from made, some made-up country, but it wasn't Wuhan, but he made it sound like Wuhan. And they turn the plane back. After this, all the time these people have been waiting to get home, to, and it's long enough anyway, the flight, for some idiot to go on that plane and talk about he wants to make a video that to go viral that's why he did it and i didn't see no penalty can you imagine if that was a black person who did that that would be bloody treason that would be a terrorist act it would be something major but i didn't see the consequences of his action in the article that i wrote and i looked right through the bottom maybe i missed it but how can somebody do that how can you be on a plane and just because you want to make a viral video and get the expressions of all the people on the plane when you're telling them you've got the coronavirus? It's not funny. How dare he? So all those people have to trek back to, to Canada. I remember some of them on their last legs, stressed, just want to reach them yard. You know what I mean? And then you don't know when the next plane is going out and then maybe the, the, the um, airport is closed. And he wants to make a viral video. I mean, honestly, that should have the strictest, the most serious penalty that should. Changing a flight on a lie. Because that's like calling the police. Uh, I mean, if you call the police and it's not an emergency and you make them come out, that's a crime. You're wasting police time. Any emergency, any emergency service. So the same should apply in, to that guy. He should do jail time. I really think he should. I think it's, and, and that would be a good viral video. See how he likes that when he's in prison. It's a bit like the guys that were licking the, um, in Walmart, they were licking all the toiletries as, as that corona challenge to see if they got the coronavirus. And the guy got 30 days in prison. That guy should get about 30 days in prison. 
and see what it feels, see if he wants to make a, he, that was another influencer as well. These bloody influencers are doing crazy things to make their videos go viral. Next thing you'll know, they'll be jumping off of buildings into a train to see if they die. Honestly, it's ridiculous. What else was there? Um, yeah, I put this about immigration. A hundred years ago, the immigration was controlled by the 1905 Alien Act. Yeah, they thought we were aliens. And some of them still do. Uh, which restricted immigration from countries outside the British Empire. 1948 British Nationality Act changed that when they needed the aliens to help. The point-based system is designed to keep aliens out. And I'm using the word aliens because that is how they perceive us to be. They don't perceive us to be immigrants. They don't perceive us to be um legal immigrants they don't even perceive us to be migrants so don't perceive it's either a foreigner or an alien which is what a foreigner is so young people will they ever know the truth about the history um, are they going to be perpetuated with this lie time and time again these blacks are here and would you believe there's only 14 percent one four immigrants in the whole uk population 14 percent and yet they make it look like the whole of england is flooded by immigrants 14 percent are immigrants and yet it's the it's it's them that are taking the jobs them that are taking the houses them that are doing this them that are doing that It's 86% of you guys, of white people, 86%. Let that kind of germinate in your mind for a little bit. Um, what else is there? Furlough. That word's been bandied around, isn't it, quite a bit. I, even me, I was thinking to myself, what the hell does that mean? And I thought to myself, well, I was listening to Martin's tips. And furlough is where organisations pay you even though you're unable to work because they want to keep you as an employee. Now, if your employer says to you, look, we can't afford to keep you, technically you could say to your employer, look, I'm willing to accept 80% of my salary. And because the government is going to pay them back 80%, which is what the furlough is, it's not going to cost the organisation anything, but it is at the organisation's discretion. So if you're in a job where they still need people, you might be able to speak to your uh, manager and ask them to furlough you. But like I said, it is, um, it is at their discretion. Um furloughs are being offered by the government to employers to employers and employers should be taking advantage of it but i think you know some of these employers are going to be so stressed what is the point they're going to be thinking of running a business paying an employer i'm an employee and you've got no business coming in what will that person be doing if you're being realistic that's with closing down Terminal 4, and the, um, the airport is rumoured to be closing down as well in a couple of weeks' time, I think. So there's not enough activity at Terminal 4, so that's closing down. Oh, yeah, Portugal are suspended rental contracts due to expire to protect families, but I'm not sure for how long. But they feel the country would be rebooted in June. So um, I think most countries are kind of giving this a three-month tenure or a three-month spate for things to normalise. Um, but the thing is, is that I don't understand why the UK can't do that because you're going to have evictions in the UK in June or say, eight, well, yeah, it probably will be about June. 
And I don't know if we're still going to be on lockdown in June. And these people are going to have to find somewhere to live. How are they going to find somewhere to live if they're being evicted, but yet they're supposed to stay in their homes? And that was Portugal's logic, that if you are, you can't be evicted and you can't be looking for homes when your rental, when your rent is expired, your contract is expired. And yet, you know, you're on lockdown, you're supposed to be in your home. So that is why they suspended it. So I don't know, maybe the UK will extend that extension. If things don't normalise in three months' time, maybe they'll extend it for another three months, um, the, the non-evictions, because they can't really evict people. They'll be on the street, won't they? Because they won't be able to do the lockdown. And then they're going to be picked up by... Um, Operation Tala, and then what's going to happen then? So, I think that is all for now. So don't forget to put your clocks, well, you probably would have put your clock back by now because it's in the morning, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you probably did put your clocks forward, not back. And that's all for now, peeps. Take care. Bye-bye.